everybody, it's me, your boy RJ. Today we are changing hydraulic fluid on a Ferris FDV45. So we may not know, they change over to this system with a free hydraulic fluid cooler, uh, radiator. Uh, so you have this right hand, left hand separate. First thing I do, get this up in the air, take the tire off. If you got an impact, you can take it off after it's in there. If not, you gotta break it free first. 13 16th lug is the size of the lugs. Uh, you can do it without taking the tire off, but I'm trying to show you a video, so it'll help. You're gonna need an empty bottle or one quart bottles of 20W50 conventional, and you're gonna need a hand pump. Okay, that's a stupid hand pump reason in a minute. Then you're going to need a 916 socket, which is here. And you got two bolts right here. In the front, you might be able to see it up better up top, right there, see it? Okay, this is the brush guard for the hydraulic transmissions. Uh, protects it from when you're out cutting. You don't smack it against stuff, okay? Ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right here you got two bolts on the front side. Well, on the back side, not the front, but you know what I mean. Uh, okay, it's gonna drop down and release. You can do it without taking those off, but you're gonna have a oily, oily mess. So, I just better do it. Get that off, drop it out of the way. Kind of clean it, it's not too bad. Okay, so there's two parts. Keep them all together here. I'm going to put this chair. I don't forget. What we're going to take is a uh, pen. You want to clean this area around the air filter so no dirt gets in that hydraulic pump. So we are going to get the pen. Air pens will be very helpful. And then what we're going to do is go down here and clean this whole area around it. Get in there. Make sure you get it all off there. I'm gonna use some carbon joke cleaner. Get in here and just push that out of the way as I can. Let it sit for a second. I'm gonna place the thumb needle on it. I'm not gonna let it sit that long happens. You can spray it, whatever. As you can see. All that extra dirt and debris is gone. Alright, we're gonna get the oil pan. Bring it under here with the tire gone, it's easier to get the oil pan under here as well. And uh, I don't think I can do it by hand, so we're gonna go get one of my tools. Here's my Hyper Tough. This is what, Walmart? Right there it is. Reach in here. Down here. Get under. It's like it's not going to want to go, so we're going to have to expand it. Slip it on there first, and it's going like this. Your fingers because it's going to release when you go backwards. And it will pinch that. Okay. So now we got that that much, I think. It should be good enough. Slip that out there. there yep, I can turn it by hand. Slide the hand right here. Out the way so you can see. Got stuff in the way. And, uh, here we go. Would you do me fair? Let's turn this fan away so it doesn't blow dirt into the hydraulics all right it should be about two quarts to come out as you can see it's not that bad it's still pretty clear but we're at the first one uh transmissions at 100 hours on a car so i'm going to do it like 500 miles um little shavings and stuff come out of there it's just best to get all that crud out of there so there you go let all that drain it should drain the whole thing Enough.
And I see we're leaning a little, so it's gonna get there. I'm gonna get a paper towel. I'm gonna wipe that area right here. Okay, keep some of that on your finger. Just like any time you change oil. So that I drop fluid on there. This should be good. You can let it drain a little longer if you really want. I guess I'll let it sit until it almost stops dripping. And then we're gonna clean the edge here of the old gaskets. On. All right, everybody. So once it's mostly done dripping like that, take this gently. Do not cross thread it. So make sure you got it right. It's been free like that. Tighten as much as you can with your hand. Pull your little can out of your way so you can get a better grip to tighten it. And then if you got, which I do, I got a rubber uh, strap that I'm going to use. I'll show you. I'll be right back. Here's a rubber strap. The way it works is you just take this here, slip it in. It's kind of hard to work under here because you get a lot of movement, so you're only going to have a real short, tight turn. You pull as tight as you can, like that, before you start. And then you just come like that, loosen, like that, loosen. If you got one of those caps, is like I have but it's a cap like a socket type that goes right over the right size those will work too but I don't have one every style oil filter size so you just keep going make sure you get on there real tight you don't want this leaking there's all your hydraulics and then also it makes a mess under there when hydraulic leaks some of these pumps it just clogs everything see how clean this is this has got 120 hours I should have done it 100 but we're at 120 good and have time okay so if not, these get corroded, like just covered in crap. So, just keep going at this, and we'll show you in a few minutes. We'll be back. All right, everybody, so you're going to come with two of these hoses, depending on the size of the bottle. So we're going to do, I think, the short one for a one quart. Let's see. I'll put that cap on. Yeah, we're getting to the bottom. Okay? This is why I need the one quart. Okay, now we're going to come over here right hand so what you're gonna do see this is an off switch you turn it like this we're gonna go right there and then unfortunately it's gonna be difficult to show you I'm gonna try to show you real quick with my hand see this here see this hose right here and right behind it is a fitting in there See that fitting? Can't even see it, can you? Okay, um, can you see it from that side? No? I don't think so. Okay, so right here, guys, there is this orange hose. See it? Mm -hmm. So I'm about to take this hose off like that. See that nibble? Okay. Now, what we're going to do, we hold this bottle up so it doesn't hit me. It's falling. Lift it up in there. Two hands. Okay. And then the hose is kind of short. So you're gonna have to come under here. And this is how you're gonna fill it. I'm gonna shove this on there as much as you can. All the way up. Okay. Like that. Make the mama bum. I know this sucks. So y'all, it's kind of a sucky thing to do. But it's not that bad. So we're going to do this whole thing. And then there you go. And this is how you refill your hydros. It's not the worst, but it's kind of a pain. The old way, you just build them up in the bottles. And let it, and then you vacuum, you uh, purge the air out of the system. No idea how long this is going to take, but we are... Oh! We're yeah. way, we've done 100 milliliters or whatever it is. <laughs> so, we'll be back for y'all in a few minutes. You don't want to stay here once we pump two quarts in. There. Yeah, we're going to be here a while. All right, guys, make sure you keep this on the RH. Make sure you got both of these transaxles here. See these? The switches. 
make sure they're forward to the run. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter for both sides, but keep it on run, not on the push mode. Add some more fluid to this if you have to pump the two pumps, uh, the two quarts, because you got to make sure you get some fluid in here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn the mower on, let it warm up. We're going to leave it on for about 30 seconds. In that 30 seconds, it's going to pump the hydraulics around in there, and then we're going to shut it off and re-add. So here we go. Yep. So, and you want to fill up until you can see the full cold. So we're at the full cold, cold mark. Are you? So yeah, we're just yeah. oh. came up. Remember your main forward a little too. We're at the full cold mark. Okay. Okay. So then, what you're going to do is you're going to take this here. Close it to the middle, put that on close. You're gonna have a little bit of a mess. So try to put a hose there, or a towel. Actually, you don't need to remove it yet. Uh, we gotta do the left hand side. I'm acting like we're done. We gotta do the left hand side. All right, so we're gonna do the left hand side. I'm not gonna video it, it's the same thing. Switch it to the opposite. And then I'm gonna show you how to purge the air afterwards. All right. All right, buddy. It's our replacement as the opposite of the reverse of removal is there's this plastic guard in your way of the problem, so you gotta push it back. Get that on. From above, right there. And push the plastic drop uh, mud guard that stops from like gumballs and stuff getting up under your engine and uh, pulling the belts off. Put those on loosely. Come over here. Put those back on. Okay, now you can, and then grab your 9 16 socket and put them all on correctly, which is here. Don't. Where's the 9 16 set? Oh, babe, I'm sorry. They're thread locking nuts, so they uh, nylon nylon nut washers types. They got nylon in there to help uh, keep it tight, so it doesn't all the vibration that happens on them. Uh, you can thread lock them if you want to. Like I said, they're nylon. So after a few times of doing this, you may have to. <laughs> <laughs> That's not nylon nut washer. Yeah. This one's gonna be a pain. You just can't. There's not a lot of movement in here. Okay. Alright, I forgot to tell you this uh, mud flap. It's designed to keep stuff out of there. You gotta put that on. It goes actually onto those exact same bolts of the transmission. Uh, fresh guard. So, put that on. Up. Completely done with the hydraulic system minus that you're going to need to top it off for the next few days and getting the air out of the system purging it. So what you're going to do is go here to the transaxle bypasses or hydraulic bypasses so you can push them over for brakes somewhere and you can't move the belts go whatever. Push them both back as you can see the sticker right here. When you push it to this back position lock you push it. Alright so what we're going to do here is 
mode and we're gonna repeat it okay same situation are you up in the air still are you gonna, yeah are you gonna show this one now mm -hmm. okay got that there we're up in the air make sure in the air for this step because it's not you ain't gonna be happy Check them, they both stayed up. That one, see the bubbles? See all that air coming out right now? Okay. This one's probably doing the exact same thing. Yep, it is bubbling as well. You're gonna lose some, so I left it connected, okay? Because I wanna make sure there's more in there. So I have it connected, so right hand, I'm gonna top it just a little bit. One, one, two, three, four, five, more. six. Do you need more in there? No. I just didn't have the right angle. Okay, and then see that one? Watch the show. See that's low? Show them from the side. Okay. And then the next two days you're going to need to top it off. You're just going to need to top it off right here. Just pour a little in. Um, so since we got this mess here, let's we'll lock this back off. Put that there. I'm going to get some towels. And you are done. This is it. You just put a towel here because you're going to make a little bit of a mess. Pull that guy off. Okay. Seal it. Then grab your rubber hose that should be there to protect it so it doesn't get debris clogged in it. It still work. See right there. Here is that. Show them real quick. A little nibble with the clamp. Okay. Reach around inside there. You have to do this by feel, guys. You're not going to really watch yourself. Okay, it slides right on. Take this here, pinch the clamp, and slowly lower it up there. You should be able to pinch it and get it on there. I'm all the way up. We are done. That is it. Like I said, the next few days this might lower itself, and you will need to top them off through there. That's it, right? That's it. Lower it back down, get your bricks out of the way. Double check all your bolts, make sure you tighten everything back up. You want the brackets because all the vibration. Um, and that's it. Good luck. Hope you liked it. Hope this helps you. Uh, it's really not that bad. It's kind of pain in the butt. I'm going to put a link below to the pump, to the filters. Uh, it's 20W50. I'll put a link if it's down there, but usually oil is crazy offline. Okay, guys? Um, I'll put the exact pump I used. I was worried because the reviews, some were real good, some were bad. This one worked great. Um, it took about 150 pumps per quart, and you had to put two quarts in plus like two and a half. I used that whole five quart bottle. So, and then there's a little left in that thing. Um, I'll put a link to. You need a 916 socket. You need an oil drip pan, all that stuff. I'll put a link to everything below. So. Bye. It really mean a lot. Help me out like 10, 20 cents per item, something like that. Help me, help you, help me. Um, please like and subscribe. Everybody helps during these times. I got a few more uh, videos on these type of machines. I've rebuilt the hydros from when they gone, the old ones. Same hydro, but before they had the system. 
Uh, go check that video. I think it's like 12 parts though because it was so long. I was trying to show everything. Um, changing belts on different ones, some of the older Ferrises, some X Mark parts, stuff like that. And uh, as always, I'm RJ. See you today, each and every day. Bye bye.